Good morning. We're going to look at some starts here. I redid, I hit redoing this because I hit the wrong button on the microphone. But here's what we're looking at today. We're going to look at how people are coming out of the blocks, where their push is coming from, and some different body positions or shapes that you need to be in at certain points and why it's working for them. So this is from uh, TCU Dartfish site. Four by one, and so we're going to look at first of all the huge push he gets off his back leg. You can see the body moving forward with the push, and then the part that we're looking at is when those knees are even. As that foot is clearing the block, you can see that his shins are parallel to the floor, and his torso is pretty close to parallel to the floor. Now that's where I want to be at that point because we're getting a pure horizontal push. But from that point, when we talked about takeoffs and uh, runways and takeoffs, you can see when he gets to that point, that's when he starts to come up. It doesn't get to the true 45. You know, ideally, we get a little bit higher, and I think if he gets his back foot on or front foot on the floor a little bit more and drops his block a little bit, he'll get a little better lean up. But from that point, you can see he gets good projection. His hips are well out in front of the starting line. Foot hits the ground. And look at how stiff his ankle is when he goes to push. There's no give whatsoever in that ankle. And then he goes. Likewise, here's another TCU sprinter. He gets a push. There's double knees. Nice and flat. You know, again, he gets to a better 45. And this guy is one of the best starters, I think, in the NCAA. You can see projection, how far his hips have shot out by the time that foot hits the ground. But again, look at the ankle stiffness when his feet hit the ground when he pushes. They're nice and locked. So if we want to look at a high school kid, this is John Fox from back in the day. Probably one of the best 55 runners in the state ever, period. Good push off the back leg, double knee, and good extension out. You can again see his projection, how far out he has gotten. That's a good three and a half feet with his projection. Now I know it's blurry, but you can see how stiff his ankles are when they hit. There's no give. It's almost like he's climbing up. You know, I don't know. Bad analogy came to one. So let's look at us. Nick's actually got a really good start. I don't, I'm not going to, we're not getting into actual body positions yet and foot placement and all that. We're going to get to that. But even so, with this really jacked up front leg, come on, Nick. Here comes his push. Good projection. And he's got nice stiff ankles, and he's at that 45. Little spin there on the left one. That's pretty good. If you look at Matt, there's his lean forward. Uh, too much lean forward, I think. You need to have better balance, more foot on that front leg. Good push forward. There's his double knee. Shins aren't even. Um, and torso is raised up. So almost too much raise. Good projection. Foot hits the ground. We're out past two pipes. You know, we're almost there. But look at the give in the ankle. See the sag when he pushes. Good extension there, but there's again that sag. Foot hits the ground. And then forward drive. Now we're going to get to some upper body and some stance stuff to, to help this out. But I think right now, you're going to see ankles need work. You've got to stay lower, quicker, and then raise up. Here's Zach. Zach is going to be my new demonstrator for what happens when you stay too low in this incredibly crouched position. He leans forward. Not a bad double knee, 
but he stays there. He doesn't come up from that point. And so you can see how restricted he is about that knee coming up. And there's the hips level has never really changed. And we remember, we've got to put that hip up one more notch, put it on top of the fence. Foot hits, big sag. And so you lose that shin angle, and now your force becomes more vertical rather than horizontal. I think with that projection, you get your body mass out in front with some balance, you, know, you can stay in that position longer. Collapse on that ankle, it's still too low. You know, your hips go down. When your shoulders go down, your hips are restricted by how far they can go. Here's Mitch. Mitch has got a great, he's very explosive. Good push off the back leg. There's his double knee. You can see he's raising up already instead of staying down, and that results in a more vertical push, and that's why he's up already. But watch this ankle collapse on the ground. Kaboom. And his body is actually going backwards while he's trying to push forward. So it's like when you jump, someone drops the floor out from underneath you. And a collapse, really big collapse there, and the push. Explosive, but a lot of wasted energy and movement, which is why he's not hitting his times in his fly and his block tens. So again, here's the gates, straight up. Oops. About two and a half, maybe a little bit, a little bit further, be better. But we need more horizontal force rather than vertical force, which we're going to work on this week. And again, there's his collapses in his ankles. So I hope this helps, gentlemen. Uh, see you at practice.